Welcome to Word of Life Ministry, where our motto is let the Word of God become alive in you. Led by a humble servant, Pastor Eugene Fondren. What do unity has to do with all in do? The all that ran down started where? At the highest point of Aaron's being. It's talking about the flow of unity. The flow of unity starts from the top. It's from the People don't know their place. So it creates an environment that's not unity. Join us today as Pastor Eugene Fungin take us on another exciting journey in the Word by the power of the Holy Ghost.
was here last week, you understood that we were dealing with the fleshly pull to sin. Their laws are in place, so we use two, two illustrations. These illustrations that we use, one was gravity, and the second was a magnet. And this is the tricky thing about gravity. You can have the same structure. Let's say if you fill this bottle with iron, and you have a plastic bottle. If you put both the same size, the same mass, just different weight, put them side by side, both of them will hit the ground at the same time. Although one may be full of metal, and the other one's empty. Gravity, no matter how big or small you are, is going to pull you down at the same rate because it's a law. And we talked about magnets. We talked about how there's a magnetic field on the north side of this planet. And with the magnetic field, there's a pull that's always pulling to the north. That's the reason why people have compass. These compass are controlled by a magnet. And the magnet goes to the north, pulls to the north. So that's why they know where they're going. With that said, we're dealing with the spiritual warfare and how the spiritualness of it works and how two positive attracts and a positive and a negative detracts. In other words, one push away and the other one attaches. And what God was saying on last week, these forces that are already preordained before the foundation of the world, these forces are laws that are in place and it's going to work. Let's go into the Bible. The book of Genesis 1 and 26. As a man or a woman, there are authorities that God has given you upon this earth. With this authority, there are forces that are designed to carry it out. We're talking about Adam and Eve, and we're talking about the authority that they were given. They were given authority, but the understanding of what they was given, it was partial. And since they didn't know the level of understanding concerning their authority, it was stolen from them. Understand when Adam, when Eve was deceived and she ate of that fruit, and Adam did eat also, what took place was a transfer of authority. Let's go to the book. Genesis 1 and 26. Listen and listen closely. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of oh, the sea. Oh, and let them have, everybody said dominion. Dominion. Dominion is to prevail or reign or to rule. What are they prevailing over? What are they ruling over? They're ruling over the fishes of the sea. Uh huh. Over the fowl of the air. The fowl of the air, the birds. And over the cattle. Hold a minute. Adam and Eve had authority that was given to them about by God. So understand this. When God made this world, he made this world for the purpose of mankind. He placed mankind on this earth and gave them power to rule over, everybody said the earth. So he was over the fishes of the sea. He was over the fowls of the air. And over the cattle. He was over the cattle. Uh -huh. And over all the earth. Hold a minute. Everybody said all. all. The earth. Y'all know what that means? That means every element of the earth. They sung the song. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall. A mountain is an element of the earth. When you don't understand your authority and your power, it can get taken from you. Y'all yeah. listening now. <laughs> Y'all listening now. That's a good thing. Every element of the earth, when you look at earth, earth means country, earth, field, ground, land, nations. God said you have power over. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So when God made this earth and he put man here on earth, man was empowered over everything that has to do with the earth. But the call, Adam and Eve didn't realize what they had. See, what happens is faith puts us in rightful position yeah. of this power. So then we have power to speak on the earth, yeah. the elements of the earth and the forces of God yes. are preordained yes. to do that what we speak right. but it has to be through faith yes, it somebody is. said please pastor. please pastor get me some Bible on that 
Matthew 17 and 19. We're living on the earth. We believe now in Christ. But we don't understand our power. So it's easily taken away from us. Just like it did with Adam and Eve. Matthew 17 and 19, what it says? Then came the disciples to Jesus apart. Uh -huh. And said, why could we not cast him out? Wait a minute. Why we couldn't cast out that, these devils, these demon spirits? Why? Because he previously told them, I've given you power over them. So since he gave them power over them, they got to one and they found out that we couldn't do nothing with this one. What's going on? You gave us power. These other ones came on out, but this one. They got to this, this particular case and they couldn't do nothing with them. They couldn't do nothing with them. Everybody said the one. The one. They gave them power. They gave them power. They came to that one. The one that gave them a force to do those things. Uh -huh. See, I'll get it, get it in a minute. Tell your neighbor, forces. forces. The one that gave them the force to do those things, they came to him. And they said that we can't do nothing with him. Listen what Jesus says. What he said, read. Because of your unbelief. Oh, stop right there. What is Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying the power that I have given you because you don't believe it. Because you was convinced out of it, the devil is as, everybody say, a roaring lion. Now everybody say, as. as. If he can talk you out of something, now he calls you to, everybody say, doubt. Jesus point blank and told them the reason why the forces of God could not work in that situation. And it was one word. Everybody say, unbelief. Stop the forces of God from carrying it out. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain. For verily. Y'all know what verily is. Truly. What he's saying is for truly. I'm telling you, man. If you have what? Faith. Everybody see it. Faith. Everybody shout it out. Faith. That's what I'm talking about. If you have faith. Uh-huh. As a grain of mustard seed. Uh-huh. Ye shall say into this mountain. Hold a minute. You shall speak to what? The elements of the earth. So the elements of the earth through faith comes under the control of you through God. Listen real good now. He said that you shall say unto this mountain. And the reason why he said this mountain, because every element is different. Every element of the earth is different, but you have power to speak against it. Uh -huh. He said, you shall speak to this mountain. And so what? Read. Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Is this the book? Amen. From the beginning of what he handed to Adam and Eve, the enemy stole it because they didn't understand it. And when he stole it from them because they didn't understand it, it took the sacrifice of the Messiah in order to give it back to you. Amen. But the problem is when he gave it back to you, you still don't understand it. So it's being taken from you again. Amen. Through ignorance. Let's go to Luke 17. Luke 17 and 6. And the Lord said, uh -huh. if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed. There it goes again. You might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root. Hold a minute. Come here. As just, just go around and start passing one of these out to everybody. That's a mustard seed. Listen. He said, if you have faith the size of the mustard seed, you shall speak to the sycamore tree. The sycamore tree is another Arabic element, element of the earth. Is this the book? Is Jesus just saying this? Is it just there for, for nothing? God is saying that I've given to you on this earth the power to speak these things through faith and when you speak these things through faith, the forces that I've designed for you will carry it out. And the Lord said, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, uh -huh. ye might say unto the sycamine tree, tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. And it what? Should obey you. Everybody says should. Should. Why? Because faith transferred the power unto you. Tell your neighbor, this earth was created for you. And since it was created for you through faith in Christ Jesus, now you have power and authority 
and you exercise that authority through speaking. There are dimensions that you can't see with your eyes. Right. See, we look at heaven as being a far, far, far place away, but it's really not. This is a three-dimensional world. So the way it works is this way, is that this earth was designed and created for you, and God has given you power over this earth and over the elements of this earth and over everything that lives upon this earth. Even the water, he's, had, he's given you power and dominion over. He's given you the ability to create things on this earth because this earth was created for you. And because this is a three-dimensional world and there are dimensions, there are angels that are in the midst of us that we don't see with our eyes. These angels are working behind the scenes. And sometimes when presidents come or kings in their day came, then the forces of Satan was controlling them. And since the forces of Satan was controlling them, the parallel to heaven and earth, it caused God to orchestrate things so that it will come down and those angels that are in the midst of that are battling above us in their dimension. We can't see it. And sometimes when the devil sets the trap in our lives, we can't see the trap. But there are angels that sees it and they're fighting in their dimension. But God is a sovereign God. And in his sovereignty, he is controlled over everything. That's right. The fallen angels and the good angels. Yeah. He's controlled over it. And he's allowing this to take place until his due time. So we live on this earth and there are angels that are fighting in their, in their, in their dimension on our behalf. And God is controlled over everything. That's right. Are y'all with me, right? Yeah. Because sovereignty means supreme power or authority. The authority of a state to govern itself or another. So God is governing or in control over the whole thing. But God has given man the power and authority upon this earth. Daniel 10 chapter the 13th verse. When King Cyrus got in position and I believe his son came along. His son the devil began to use his son. And when the enemy began to use his son because of the parallel with heaven and earth. It caused some fighting to go above them in their dimension. Daniel didn't know because he didn't see. He couldn't see all this fighting that's going on. But there was fighting and taking place. Only thing Daniel was waiting on was an answer. Ask your neighbor, have you been? Have you been? Waiting on an answer. And in the angel's dimension, they might be fighting to try to get you their answer. Listen to what it said, read. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. One and twenty days. Are y'all hearing that? But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, uh -huh. came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Are y'all hearing this? These are angelical beings that are fighting to give Daniel an answer in their dimension. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor the forces, so the forces that are out there. Are out there. Turn to 2nd King, the 6th chapter. The power that we have here on earth. And as a man or a woman of God, you have the power to change things. Tell your neighbor, I have, I have the power, the power to, change to change things. And these forces that God have, they will work on your behalf. But you know what the problem is? The forces that God has to work on your behalf is waiting on a command. The problem is we never give it a command. We never speak it. Second King, 6 and 16, what is that? And he answered, uh -huh. Fear not, uh -huh. for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Hold a minute. Elijah had something that we didn't have. Y'all know what that was? The ability to see another dimension. We look at that we're just in this world alone. We don't see the different dimensions that's there. And we don't see the different forces that are taking place in this world. But Elijah had a relationship with a God to the point that his eyes were open to see into another dimension. How do I know this? Read what it said. And Elisha prayed. Hold a minute. His servant was scared. He woke up. And when he woke up, he went around and all around the mountain top, there were soldiers. The army came to get Elijah. Tell your neighbor they was trapped. And his servant saw it. And he was, man, we messed up. It's over for us. You know what Elijah said to him? He said, fear not. You know why? Because he saw into another dimension. And what he saw 
in this dimension, he's getting ready to explain to us. Are y'all hearing me? What did he say? Read. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Oh, everybody. Turn to your neighbor and say, Lord, <laughs> open their eyes. Open their eyes. And he prayed to the servant and said, Lord, open his eyes because I'm able to see into another realm. I'm able to see in another dimension. But he came. He's worried. But I'm not. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. Uh-huh. And he saw. Whoa! Everybody said he saw. He saw. This is what he saw. Read. And behold, the mountains was full of horses and chariots of fire around about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord. When the servant eyes was open, he saw around the captain's man, flaming chariots. He saw the angelical beings in the form of a flaming chariot. And they were all around the men that was on the army. But see, here's the thing. Tell your neighbor, they was there. But they weren't doing nothing. Not only that, but the angels that was up there, they weren't doing nothing. They was there, waiting on a command. Now read what it said. Read that again. And when they came down to him. So now, the captains of the army, they started to come down to get Elijah. But then the name of the angels were still up there, waiting on a command. And what happened when they came together? What, 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 what happened? Elijah prayed unto the Lord. Hold a minute. Elijah began to pray. And what did he pray? Elijah prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. Hold a minute. What did he do? He gave the angels a command. The difference from Elijah and us, in many cases, we can't see the, into the dimension. So since we can't see into it, we don't think it's spirit, we don't think it's reality. So since we don't think it's reality, we don't speak. We don't speak to the elements of the earth. But Elijah saw into this dimension and saw these angels. And he prayed. And when he prayed, his eyes began to be open. And he saw what Elijah saw. Then at that point, as they began to approach him, Elijah gave those angels a command. And when he gave them a command, you know what they done? The forces that God has. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elijah. Are y'all hearing that? According, everybody said according. According. To the words. Of Elijah. of Elijah. Are y'all getting that? Amen. The problem is, we never give it a command. We just complain. We complain about how what we lack. We complain about our situation. Amen. We complain about our problem. We complain about all the stuff that we're going through, all the mess. We complain about all that, but we don't through faith because we don't realize the power that was given to us. Is I'm in the book. I want to make sure I'm in the book. Matthew 18 and 18. This transfer of power is now through faith. See, faith is an action. When you believe, you, you act upon what you believe. So when you begin to take action upon what you believe, that's faith. This is what Jesus said. Read. Verily I say unto you, uh -huh. whatsoever ye bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Hold a minute. This transfer of power was given to us through faith. And Jesus is saying to us, whatsoever you bind. Whatsoever you bind, where, here, where, on earth. Why? Because you have given the power over the earth. That's why earth is there. You ain't got no power in space. That ain't ours. It wasn't given to us. But this earth was in the elements of this earth. What he said? Whatsoever you bind here on earth, uh-huh. Shall be bound in heaven. Why? Because of the parallel there of earth and heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Because the forces of God will carry out the very things that you commanded through faith. This Again, is Jesus talking. I say unto you uh -huh. that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for thy Father which is in heaven. Are we believing this stuff? We read this, but the problem is we don't believe it. And since we're tricked out of it, it don't work for us. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. There are three things we want to talk about or tell you about concerning evil forces. We're going to deal with how the spiritual realm works. Remember we talked about the dimensions, things that you can't see. And these are how these things work and what, how, what the illustrations that we're going to use 
to show you how these forces work is magnet and iron in a battery. You take this metal. Let's say that this is a church going guy. It's a church man, church woman. They're shouting, they're praising God, they're going about their merry way, everything's going good. They're not even attracting no kind of evil. But the old folks used to say this the birds of a feather, everybody. The birds of a feather. I'm going to church, everything's good, everything is wonderful. But what this is what God showed me. That if I was to take a piece of metal, hang around, drinking, smoking, cursing, have all these spirits dealing with them. No. Birds of a feather. It's no church boy. When you come around, hey, they go church boy. Come on in, they start telling you. dirty jokes. Showing you pictures that you're not supposed to be showing. Y'all hear me? All of a sudden, you leave from them. And when you leave from them, all of a sudden, things start to uh, attach itself. Now you're wondering why I'm having this. Thank you for tuning in to Word of Life Radio Broadcast. Our service time is as follows. Wednesday Bible study, 7 o'clock p.m. Sunday school is at 9.30 a.m. Worship service is at 11 o'clock a.m. The church address is 343 Pentlerfield Road, Taylor, Mississippi. We'd love to see you there.